major heavyweight action in the boxing world uh this saturday december 7th saudi arabia hosting the huge rematch anthony joshua and andy ruiz jr for the wba wbo and ibf world titles and uh a bunch of heavyweight fights on that card i'm joined by our yeah. boxing guru asp anthony scott pyatt uh to go over the odds and make some picks here for saturday's fights these are going to air on the zone uh so the zone you know at the very least you know delivery here on a major rematch and uh you know could be the biggest fight of the year you know depending on uh, a couple other circumstances and stuff they've also obviously delivered canelo including canelo versus kovalev which is a big fight so the zone's still you know popping with big fights here and you know this could be the biggest of all asp well let's start with uh uh with the rematch anthony joshua and andy Ruiz jr uh the first time out obviously uh joshua you know more than a, a, a minus 1000 favorite uh this time around he's at minus 225 Ruiz plus 185 so an underdog with the belts over under is at seven and a half which is you know uh middle of the road number over at minus 155 under plus 135 so they're expecting maybe a slow start in this one i don't know how do you see this one oh uh, this is going to be a fun fight uh, i was able to and i'm still making a couple more bets this week but I was able to get Andy Ruiz at 225 a couple of weeks ago, um, predicting that it would come down to, to a 150 or something like that. It's currently at a plus 185. Um, gosh, where do you even start with this fight? I, I, I was talking about a, my edit with my editor uh, today, and uh, I was saying, look, if you if you ask who the best boxers in the world are, you know, you put Joshua up there, maybe in the in the top three. And Ruiz is maybe in the top 10 or even top 15. Um, but but styles make fights. And so I'm not necessarily picking Joshua to win. Do I think he's a better fighter? Sure. Do I think Ruiz is, is a great matchup uh, for, for Joshua? And, 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 and it just really is, is a matchup that takes, takes advantage of some of the things. So, yes, Joshua has long arms. But if Ruiz gets on the inside, those long arms can't really get the leverage that you need. Ruiz is then on the inside um, with his, you know, little raptor punches to the ribs. And it's it's a beautiful thing. So now, having said that, um, I've seen recently that Joshua might have taken some trouble in, in, in his sparring and in his practice uh, training. I think he might have been knocked down a couple of times. They're not quite letting the full story out. Uh, I think he's been shook to his core. And I also think that he has to fight a different fight this time. And he's talked about it, too, that it's going to be uh, – he's going to try and be more strategic. Uh, they've both gotten in better shape, by the way. Uh, try and make it more of a boxing match and not – you know, and, which means he's not going to open up as much. And, and so Andy's not as likely to get knocked out. It also means it'll be harder for Andy to get on the inside because when Joshua was swinging and missing – that's when Andy could come in and maybe attack the ribs or whatnot or use uppercuts. Um, so basically, Joshua was saying he made some mistakes and he's going to be much more strategic. Um, and, and, that, and that could draw this fight out. So I have a couple of interesting picks on this one uh, to get to at the end. Um, and it has to do with this. Ruiz was up 57-56 on two of the judges' scorecards. Joshua was up 57-56 on only one card. Um, so I'm thinking... If you throw that in, the fact that Joshua is going to be more conservative, he's afraid of getting knocked out. I mean, this fight's kind of a toss-up. Um, Ruiz is in his element. There's a couple of things I could see happening. If, if Anthony is too reserved, Ruiz may attack him by the second or third round um, if Joshua's really not throwing anything. Um, if not, you could look at sort of a repeat, but – Kind of what I think is Joshua saying he was being too reckless. That's going to lead him to be cautious this fight. That'll prevent both of these guys from being able to hit that knockout punch. Psychologically, it's super tough for Joshua. I think he's, uh, you know, the mental underdog. He, he's not the underdog on paper. Uh, but I think he has more demons to overcome, more doubts to overcome. Um, you know, it wasn't until, gosh, was it? Patterson, that that was the two-time heavyweight champion of the world, never been done before. I think um, it didn't used to be done because there is that block that in that in that whatnot. So 
basically, I think there's going to be, if, if both these guys stay in boxing, I think there will be a third fight. I think that's if Joshua wins this one outright, people are going to want to see it again. If Ruiz wins it, I think Joshua has to go on sort of an odyssey, that, that sort of hero's quest, and go back and fight some tune-up fights. I think he loses, you know, the chance to fight Wilder or, or Fury right away. And uh, Joshua would have to go really do some soul searching. And, and, you know, Ruiz will get beat by somebody else. And then Joshua can beat the guy that, that beats Ruiz. And I think Joshua is good enough to beat all but a couple, if not everybody, in the heavyweight division. So Joshua might become champ again by beating the guy that beats Ruiz. That's if Ruiz wins this fight, of course. Um, but then Ruiz and, and, and the community boxing community is going to want to come back for that third fight. So you could start this sort of round robin, rock, paper, scissor type of thing. Uh, Joshua's the rock, and he's got most people covered. But this big flabby piece of paper that <laughs> Ruiz does the trick. And... Um, so I have a hard time with this one. My prediction, I'm copping out. My prediction is I predict a good fight, Miguel. That's what I predict. Uh, I'm betting on Ruiz. I'm going to call it a dog pick because I would pick Anthony Joshua as the slight favorite. But, but the money is with Ruiz at that plus 185 right now. And where the money I really think is, because I think this would be uh, an even bigger – upset is if it does go the distance uh you know the, the lines at your at your casinos are saying you know this is going to be another knockout joshua is changing the style of his fight if he does that he'll keep ruiz off more and then then you have to start looking at the cards now was ruiz only up on the cards because of the all the action they were getting or if joshua sort of shuts down and goes defensive and tries to use his jab a lot can ruiz still win enough of those rounds so I think it's going to be a, a majority or a split decision. The money is on Ruiz at a split decision. That's a plus 6,600. So that's a bet people ought to look at. Ruiz by split decision for 6,600. Uh, Joshua by split decision is pretty good money. I don't have it in front of me. I think it was closer to, to 2,200 or something to that effect. Um, but I might take the majority decision and the split decisions. The decisions that that's the shocker is if this thing actually goes the distance because either guy can knock anybody out at any time. But I think they're with Joshua coming in to purposely keep this from being a dog fight. I mean, does he get slapped once and get mad? Does he feel like he's losing the fight and abandon the strategy in the seventh, eighth or 10th round? Maybe, maybe. And then anything could happen. This is just going to be one hell of a fight. Uh, but as, but as a betting man, Look for that split decision, uh, maybe by Ruiz, for a plus 6,600. Great odds on that, and this should be a great fight. Yeah, but, you know, uh, all kinds of questions on both ends. You know, you kind of just got to let it play out and watch it, you know. If uh, you're not a hardcore better, you may even want to not bet. Because you, really <laughs> you know what I mean? It, it is a little bit of a uh, – yep. uh, you could see it going either way, you know. But Joshua, Joshua has, I think, the bigger obstacle in front of him because, it, it, as you hinted at, it's a little bit more uh, mental uh, as well, you know. Whereas to Ruiz, everything's gravy at this point, you know. And, yep. and then you get you send out messages like, you know, I, I recently read that Joshua's going to clear eighty million for this fight, and uh, Ruiz is going to take home ten. You know, if I were Ruiz, I'd be like, you know, okay. I mean, that's okay. But uh, Josh was fighting for that at this point because the manager you know, after one loss to say, okay, but he's still Joshua. So in $80 million paydays, you know, I mean, you could count probably on one or two hands the guys have made that for one fight, you know? Joshua is getting paid, surprisingly, I think. Six no, or seven mean, times what Ruiz is. I mean, you know, as the calendar. The, you know, Eddie Hearn, and they monetize well, and, you know, he's from a major economy. So, you know, you don't know if 10 million of that's from Under Armour or, you know, or, or anything like that. So, uh, but, yeah, he's monetizing, uh, you know, very well. Another loss, will, will he'll lose that. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. He'll, he'll still be a well-paid athlete, but he will not be – 
you know, one of the top 100 athletes in, in the world anymore, you know, and that especially, uh, uh, you know, if, if he goes down the way he did last time, you know. So Miguel, what, tell me, and I know there's a lot of possibilities here with this fight. We really just have to watch it and, and see it play out. And with the type of power both these guys have, you know, all, anything could happen at any time. Just give me your gut reaction. Are, are we looking at a knockout and which, what round, by who? Tell me what you're feeling on this one. This is a, a hell of a fight, and I, I'm curious kind of what you're, what you settle on. It, it, it is a crossroads fight for Joshua because Joshua now is going to be asked to prove what maybe boxers prove over the course of time. He so, or, sort of has to prove it all at once, you know? Come back, knock him out, put the loss behind you, move on, take on the next guy, the next guy. Wilder, Fury, win those big fights. You know, his path is still there as the dominant heavyweight at this time. And that's all he's been fed from when he was a gold medalist, right? And and the path um, through the pro ranks, it has his ups and downs. Um, you know, there were, he's been criticized at times. And stuff. He's overcome a great deal of criticism, you know, but there are some critics of him that, you know, he, he, he cherry-picked a little bit that, you know, in his amateur ranks, he's been down. He's been out, you know. So that that, that, that Ruiz found his chin. There are other guys who are going to say, I, I'll find it too. Um, so with a win here, he gets to continue down that path and be like, okay, shake that off, shake that off. Still hard to shake off, but a loss really kills him. A, a loss is the death knell because then you, you, you know we, you're just not the elite guy. And I wonder, you know, if we're, we're getting a little bit of that privilege from the early going. I mean, at the end of the day, the Olympic gold medal was won in London. And you wonder if take that and put that Olympics in Australia and would he have won? Right. Was, there, was there a guy who was close? Was there, you know, something? I, 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 I'm not familiar off the top of my head with you. I, I know I've looked at it, but... Um, you know, those are the types of quite. You know, Luke Campbell's another Brit that won an Olympic medal. They won a lot of medals that year, and not a lot of those guys have translated to be, you know, top-notch pros. They're still Brit-level pros, which is, you know, but not the best in the world. But they're not, you know, the elites are better. That's right. Um, you know? That's right. And it may be the same with Joshua too. Let's not forget yeah, that I mean, they're exactly. both sort of knocked. A little bit. I got a lot of respect for Eddie Hearn, but at the same time, I've sort of knocked how Joshua is, has pick and choose his opponents and how he's, I don't want to say he's ducking people, but it, but but they haven't hurried to make the matches with a Tyson Fury or a Deontay. Yeah, the, whole business, the whole business was, uh, you know, when Joshua went down, it was almost as much of a black eye to Eddie Hearn as it was to Joshua. Because it was Hearn's you know, Hearn's path to take over the business or to be the dominant force, and he's a young man, too, you know, for the next 30 years in boxing. If he lose to be Aaron's age, you know, for the next 50 years in boxing. That's right. Then, uh, you know, his path to that dominance was etched through Joshua, and that took a hit. So everybody kind of went, ha, ha, ha. Well, we better get to some of these others. I just realized we're about 13 minutes into this, and – yeah, we've only covered one of these four fights. We, so, <laughs> we better tell these folks where else to put their money, brother. <laughs> yeah, so the rest of these uh, fights, they went heavy on the on, on the heavyweights. Uh, ha ha, no pun intended. <laughs> uh, we had a super featherweight bout get canceled that I thought was intriguing. Scott Quay, the former champion, rival to Carl Frampton. Only two losses on his career. He was a minus 240 favorite over Joan O'Carroll. Joan O'Carroll, one of those guys that uh, – you know, has won uh, fans over internationally for his uh, uh, gritty way. So I was looking forward to that fight, but it got canceled quick, bum shoulder, and uh, that's cost them fights in the past. So uh, more of uh, that for Scott Quigg. Unfortunately, for Joe O'Carroll, no fight this weekend. Uh, and Quigg was the favorite there, right? Quigg, Quigg was actually the favorite in that fight. Yep, he did, and he pulled yeah. out. So uh, hitting the heavyweight fights, let's start from the bottom. we got Eric Molina and Phil Grovelick. Grovic undefeated, a uh, major favorite here at minus 2150. Molina, the veteran, plus 1300. Molina, basically known as an opponent for uh, both Wilder and, and Joshua in the past, so you can measure up kind of thing, and that's what's going on here for Grovic, hoping to be a contender, uh, you know, in short order here. Any news on this one? What do you think? It's an interesting fight, and as you mentioned, I'll point out again, but, you know, Eric Molina, uh, Dillian White, 
and Alexander Provotkin have all fought uh, Anthony Joshua, all lost to Anthony Joshua, of course. So this is sort of, uh, it's kind of interesting, you know, Eddie Hearn putting this fight together, and if Joshua's watching the monitors, he gets to see guys that he's already beat before he hopefully goes and does it again. Is there a psychological thing to that? I'm not sure, but uh, but it doesn't hurt to see a bunch of guys that you've beat up already out there fighting um, to warm the crowd up for you. So there's a little something interesting there. Uh, Eric Molina is an interesting guy. Uh, I wouldn't say that it reminds me of like, uh, what do we cover? David Allen uh, recently. Uh, mm -hmm. He fought what David Price and then went on to fight in a fight that we called two weeks ago where he's got the skills and he's got the power. Um but his chin has made a silly putty, basically. And once he gets hit, that's that's it. And that's kind of Molina. He's only lost five times, 27 and five. But they were all knockouts, including this is an interesting. I wonder what, you know, what happened to that guy sort of thought. Uh, his debut was to a guy named Ashanti Jordan. And it was Ashanti Jordan's debut as well um, for both fighters. Jordan beats him. Knocks Molina out in Molina's first professional fight. Jordan then goes 10-0, and 0, and then he retires after his first loss. He's 10-1, 2009. Boom, he's gone. He's out of the picture. So no, no rematch there, no getting it back. Ashanti didn't go on to do a whole lot. But setting that sort of unknown fighter aside, Molina has only lost to Chris Ariola, uh, Wilder, Joshua, and Brazil. And he's been knocked out by the four of them, and, and the fifth was the Jordan. So now he did wobble Wilder in Areola. Uh, he, so, but he's just so susceptible to knockout. Um, but it's only big, big punchers that have got him. Yeah, Rogovic qualifies that, and I think it'll take I, him out that's right the problem. <laughs> <laughs> Therein lies the problem. You turn it around to Rogovic. 9-0 and with seven knockouts, wins over Amir Mansoor, might be the biggest name he's fought yet. Um, but all of his opponents have had winning records. So, he, you know, he's, he's not been fighting just, just the normal sort of path that a guy like Molina did, fight a guy in his debut or guys with losing records and whatnot. So I'm not saying he's fought big names, but he's fought winning record guys only. 9-0, and seven knockouts. He's pretty poised. He tees people up. He seems to always be in charge, that ring presence. Uh, Hergovic knockout in five is my prediction. The plus 1,300 on Molina, it almost gets my attention. I almost want to call it a dog watch. Definitely not a dog pick, but a dog watch on that plus 1,300. Uh, Molina's not a bad boxer. If he can keep from getting knocked out, Maybe he pulls off an upset. I don't really see it happening. This is not a fight I suggest. But if you want to put 10 bucks on it for a $130 win, I might do it. I might do it. Yep. And uh, as we move down the card here, we got more heavyweight action. Now we got Dillian White. Dillian White, still trying to keep his record clean, you know, if, uh, with that one loss to Joshua. Uh, you know, he's in the title picture. He's facing Marius Watt, sure. who was in the title picture, you know, eight years ago. Uh, he's had a, a few losses, um, you know, uh, to Pavek, to Klitschko. Those are the normal losses. But then on his comeback trail, he's got, uh, you know, positive steroid tests. And then he's got losses to Jarrell Miller, Arthur Stilka, and uh, a Polish fighter named Martin Backholt. So uh, he's coming off a two-fight winning streak, but I think, you know, they selected um, Watt for White as a, another guy, uh, you know, with a bit of a resume and a, a still a, a good record, but not a guy who's going to be challenged much by Watt. Seems to have fallen into that, uh, you know, uh, taking fights for the money kind of thing. And uh, what, what we've got there is we've got White, a 1750 favorite, Watt came back at plus 1,000. Yeah, and I think White should be a slightly bigger favorite than that even. I mean, um, I, I think Molina has a better chance in the last fight than, than Walk does in this fight, for example. 
Um, first half of his career, all losing record fighters. Now he's had wins over Christian Hammer, Kevin McBride, Erkin Tepper. Uh, but as you mentioned, Jarrell Miller, Arthur Spilka, and Martin Bacoli, those were three in a row. And that and those just happened. He's only won two fights since those three losses, I believe, if I remember. I correctly. If I'm not correct, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think, too, that that, that comes after a positive uh, suspension for a positive steroid test. So, uh, you know, yeah. you add to that the David Price syndrome where Walk is another guy who's legitimately 6'9", 6'10". He's a tall dude. And, uh, you know, as those guys age, unless they're really, really prime athletes and walk does not qualify as such, um, you know, the wheels can really come up. You can be very slow and yep. that sort of stuff. And, uh, uh, you know, I think walk is definitely on the B side. And that's it. And that's what it comes down to. I mean, Dillian White only lost to Anthony Joshua. And uh, sorry about the call coming in. Try and stop that real quick. Decline that. Sorry, fellas. Uh, any rate, uh, if you look at it, he only lost to Anthony Joshua, Dillian White. And uh, then he's got wins over David Allen, Derek Chishora twice, Joseph Parker, Oscar Rivas. So basically, if you rotate counterclockwise against Walk, then you'll be all right. Because basically... Walk is a straightforward and backward type fighter. He's got a decently powerful, nice straight right, but it's real slow and it's real projected. So if you stay away from that and you rotate properly, White can take advantage of it and then he can adjust and throw some left hooks. He should be just fine. He can also throw uppercuts. I, I found uh, Walk to be listed at six, seven and a half. I would believe the 6'8", 6'10", you were mentioning. He looks no, no, no. taller than 6'7", but uh, but you're talking about a tall guy. But what like a Jarrell Miller did to walk was just really pound him low, and then if he'd ever bend over, then the uppercut started flying, and, and that ended up looking really bad. So I, I wouldn't have any bet on this one at all. I think White's going to knock him out in eight in the eighth round. If anything, you could get into betting the rounds, but that's fairly tedious uh, betting with not, uh, you know, it's a tricky one to do. We've done it. We called it a couple of weeks ago. We called round four and it did happen. Uh, Dillian White, uh, knockout in eight, but at a negative 1750, no, no sense in betting on him straight up. And uh, Walk just doesn't really have much of a chance in my opinion. So I'd pretty much leave this one alone. Dillian White, knockout in eight, do with what? What, what that with what do you want <laughs> that leaves us with the final heavyweight fight which uh alexander Povetkin and michael hunter very interesting fight obviously the odds will be much closer on this one Povetkin 35 and 2 hunter 18 and 1 hunter only lost to alexander Usyk in the cruiserweights um moving up to heavyweight he was in the hunt for the fight that andy ruiz got with anthony joshua it didn't materialize for him. He's been looking for a place to showcase himself at heavyweight. Uh, Povetkin, a tall order in my book, uh, is only two losses to Klitschko and Joshua. And uh, Povetkin, a small heavyweight, but also an Olympic gold medalist and uh, a lot of pedigree. Um, and a tough guy. So uh, uh, we'll see here. The books have Hunter as a favorite at minus 200 with Povetkin paying back at plus 170. How are you looking at this one? I mean, this one... Um... I like Povatkin. As you say, Anthony Joshua and Va Vladimir Klitschko beat him. Those are pretty tough hitters. Those are pretty good boxers. He's beat Huey Fury, David Price, Christian Hammer, Hasim Rockman, and Chris Bird. Uh, if he stays disciplined and attacks Hunter's body, I think this is key. From, from the film I've been watching, Hunter's more susceptible in the body. So if Povatkin stays disciplined and attacks his body, um, and then when he gets him hurt, Pavot can, can attack really well. So Hunter, he was two and two as an amateur. He lost to Alexander Usyk, which is kind of how I think Pavot can should fight him in that style. Unanimous decision. Sergey Kuzman, he beat. Um, Hunter swings really wild and he showboats a lot. Uh, a disciplined Eastern European style is going to give him trouble. So, and Hunter gets tired in the late rounds. So that's my point. Pavotkin is, is, is a veteran, and I think he can hang in there. 
I, I don't think he's only been knocked out once in 37 fights. Um, I think he can hang in with Michael Hunter. And if you get to the seventh, maybe the eighth round, you see a different Michael Hunter. Um, a Michael Hunter that's tired, that, that, that can't throw with the same output, that can't move his feet with the same uh, grace or speed. And so I think Michael Hunter uh, could do something in the first half of the fight. Uh, I think if he doesn't, he probably is going to be both behind on points and susceptible to Pavotkin possibly knocking him out. So I'm going to predict Pavotkin by decision, and I'm going to go with the dog pick on that one since he is the underdog at, at plus 170. Yeah, I think a lot of people may look at that Pavetkin, a lot of pedigree, and, uh, you know, still kind of, you know, a stubborn guy. That I don't think he's given up his, his idea that he wants to hold a heavyweight world championship. And, uh, you know, he's got to keep winning. And he's got the one win, uh, as you mentioned, um, against Huey Fury since the loss to Joshua. But he's been operating in the United Kingdom, uh, you know, uh, for, for several fights there, uh, you know. Uh, again, I think he's a guy who still remains focused, even though he's approaching 40, and uh, still stubbornly wants to make one more run at the top. So I think a plus 170 uh, might be a good look here for Alexander Pavetkin. Yep, I think so too. I think general, this is going to be a good fight. Uh, we mentioned the zone earlier. Keep in mind, folks, since this is in Saudi Arabia, it starts Eastern time. Um, at, at noon with your some of these undercard fights, and they say Joshua and Ruiz should take the ring somewhere around 3.30. So there it is. Uh, you know, check local listings for start times and everything, so uh, you want to be on, on the lookout Saturday afternoon. I'm Miguel Arati for the CRP. I've been talking to Anthony Scott Pye at ASP as we've been making picks for Anthony Joshua versus Andy Ruiz Jr. 2 going down December 7th in Saudi Arabia.